to propose a toast for the uh, friendship between United States of America for the uh, enhancement of the uh, fruitful cooperation that was launched many years ago. Ambassador Sullivan, dear guest, our celebration of today is the result of a Cameroonian long journey that started in 1972. Braving predictable and unpredictable difficulties this process ended up putting in place the foundation for a multicultural society in Cameroon. Cameroon's experience of national integration in the past year have been put to the test of resilience and always emerged stronger. At a domestic level, the social tensions resulting from the northeast, northwest, and the southeast region of the country seem to be inherent to the normal course of evolutions through which the construction of a pluralistic society take place. Cameroon has been subject to repeated aggressions from both its border in the north the set Boko Haram imposed on my country a bloody and provoked war that Cameroon didn't want to fight. While from the eastern border, due to the political instability prevailing within the broadly and neighboring country of Central African Republic, Cameroon had to confront many armed bands spreading terror among the, among the populations. The response of Cameroonian defense, uh, defense force has been commensurate with the challenges facing the country. We have the uh, human resources, well trained, able to cope with the two major languages, English and French. All this potential, the uh, existing potential, the mining sector, industrial, water, electricity, and many others are waiting for American partners to join in this uh, common endeavor to make a, a Cameroon an emerging and modern country, as we say, by the horizon of 2035. I have a special affinity for Cameroon and its very hospitable people. My very first diplomatic posting was in Cameroon. My husband and I have many fond memories of dancing to Makosa. <laughs> eating Ndole. Yeah. And drinking Joba Jo. I recall the euphoria and declaration of a national holiday when the indomitable lions returned to a hero's welcome in Yaoundé after winning the Men's Africa Cup of Nations in 1988. Wow. A feat I was happy to see the team repeat last year. And also in 1988, as a junior political officer, I observed the re-election of President Paul Bia. Our two countries share a strong partnership that dates to Cameroon's earliest days of independence. The United States was one of the first countries to establish diplomatic relations with the Sovereign Republic of Cameroon in 1960. In 1962, President Kennedy welcomed then-President Ahijo to Washington for a state visit. I was not yet four years old at the time of that visit, so I don't remember it, but I do recall President Bia's bilateral working visits to Washington in 1986 and 2003, and was myself serving in Cameroon when President Bia received President Reagan's Secretary of State, George Shultz, in 1987. 
continent. From the very start to the present day, the U.S. Cameroonian relationship has been based on mutual respect as we work together for a more peaceful and prosperous future and strive to build the long-term stability that will attract further economic growth. We appreciate Cameroon's effective role in fighting and degrading Boko Haram, whose terror campaign continues to affect the lives of citizens, Muslims, Christians, and people of traditional beliefs alike who live in northern Cameroon. As we partner with you in this struggle, we look forward to continued progress against a brutal enemy. We also commend Cameroon for joining the coalition against ISIS and for its major contributions to the multinational joint task force in the Lake Chad Basin area. And to MINUSCA, the United Nations peacekeeping mission in the neighboring Central African Republic. It is worth noting in this context that last year's UNDP program study found that 71% of radicalized Sub-Saharan Africans became that way due to a negative encounter they or someone close to them had had with security forces. This clearly shows that respect for human rights is not just the right approach, but also has enormous implications for reducing grievances that can fuel extremism. The United States and Cameroon share many other common priorities. Fighting human trafficking, halting the illicit wildlife trade, protecting the environment, and improving maritime security. Additionally, our two governments are working together to improve the health of Cameroon's people, including by fighting HIV AIDS and emergent pandemic threats. Most recently, while in Garoa, U.S. Ambassador Peter Barlerin inaugurated Cameroon as a partner in the President's Malaria Initiative. Exchanges and student programs reinforce the strong ties between Cameroon and the United States. For example, Peace Corps Cameroon, established in 1961, is one of the oldest uninterrupted Peace Corps programs in the world. Last year, I was fortunate enough to visit Africa in miniature once again and observe the great strides in its development in the 30 years since I lived there. However, as friends, we are concerned by current internal tensions. We sincerely hope that all elements of Cameroonian society can undertake genuine, inclusive dialogue to resolve these differences peacefully so that Cameroon can realize its vision of becoming an upper middle income country by the year 2035. In the meantime, we wish for this beautiful country a peaceful year ahead, full of progress, and free of hate speech and violent conflict from any source.